I still remember the first time I played Sonic Generations. It was one of the first games I had experienced on an HD television and alongside Resident Evil 5, it was easily among the most impressive looking games I had seen on PS3 and Xbox 360 at the time. Thanks to a strong art direction attuned to the impressive lighting of the so-called Hedgehog engine, it almost felt like laying hands on an interactive animated movie. In fact, some Sonic games that really released over a decade later wouldn't look nearly as impressive. Besides that, Generations finally focused entirely on fast-paced platforming with the eponymous mascot after prior 3D Sonic games, such as Sonic Unleashed, often relied on gimmicky diversions between the roller coaster levels you came for. So it was a bit shocking going back to the original Sonic Generations. In hindsight, it pushed its hardware beyond its limits with some pretty bad stuttering, laughably long loading times and perhaps most importantly, the controls didn't feel responsive enough for the high speed of the gameplay due to the performance. In particular, the side-scrolling, of which about half of the game consists of, wasn't as snappy as in Sonic Mania or Superstars. Which is why Sonic X Shadow Generations made a lot of sense as a remaster, despite not looking drastically improved on the surface. Because here's a hot take, more sophisticated remasters or even remakes of games from that console generation, like Dead Space or The Last of Us, have more striking visual improvements, but in reality, these games were fine as they were, in my opinion, and could have easily worked as ordinary ports on newer hardware. Don't even get me started on remakes of PS4 games. While the main campaign of Sonic X Shadow might look like a simple port, it actually feels much better to play. In fact, playing Sonic X Shadow on a better television with higher resolution and performance was almost as flashy as playing the original for the first time. It's a remaster done right, recreating the game how you remember it, without rebuilding it. I couldn't be further away from being a frames per second counter, but the high speed of Sonic's gameplay demands the controls to react quickly and playing the new version makes a big difference in game feel. Now the remaster doesn't change the core formula and if you weren't a fan of games like this or Sonic Colors before, the remaster won't change your mind. While the side-scrolling sections, which are plentiful, channel the classic pinball-like mechanics but with a sick new cinematography, the 3D gameplay is all about racing through the highways and roller coaster like levels in which you need to memorize quick time events and the timing of homing attacks while the boosting controls are intentionally a bit floaty. It's often more about spectacle than precise platforming and there's a reason why I've emphasized the importance of the graphics at the start of this video. While each of Sonic's adventures of the past is represented with one big 3D stage and one big 2D stage, maybe the more engaging part of Sonic Generations are the additional challenges, where short obstacle courses test your skills for specific mechanics. Getting all the unlockables and mastering each challenge is the meat of the game. Some people encountered rare glitches, but they seem identical to the original game. And considering the long history of Sonic Team creating glitchy ports and poor remasters, in this case it can be considered a success that no new problems were found. However, there's one other aspect which makes this remaster quite unique, which is the entirely new campaign featuring Sonic's edgy rival Shadow the Hedgehog. Whereas other remaster or remake projects rebuild entire games from scratch, Sonic X Shadow Generations presents a potentially more viable and interesting alternative by taking an old game which already has a solid foundation and building on top of it. Super Mario 3D World did the same thing with the so-called Bowser's Fury campaign when they ported the game from Wii U to Switch. There are many classics which don't need full-fledged remakes, which are maybe still unique compared to their sequels, but for which we would have always wanted to have more of. If done right, I would welcome more games being brought back like this, which means by expanding them, not remaking them redundantly. In the case of Shadow Generations, the new campaign does have its own feel too. 
I'm not just talking about the story and Shadow's character arc, which was Sega's family-friendly response to the edgy, over-the-top anti-heroes of the late 90s and early 2000s, complete with butt rock and lots of melodrama. Also in terms of gameplay, Shadow's movements are snappier and the level design offers more variation thanks to his unique abilities like stopping time and using enemies as projectiles. A few parts feel a little undercooked, like traversing the new overworld, but overall Shadow feels like a perfect DLC which introduces fresh twists while staying in harmony with the base game, except that the original came out over a decade earlier, which again is something I'd love to see for more classic games instead of remakes, like when John Romero makes new levels for the original Doom. But apart from all that, it hits all the right nostalgia points. Generations was all about recreating the most infamous set pieces of 90s Sonic, which at this point has been done ad nauseum. While nostalgia for the now endearingly edgy Y2K era of Shadow and Sonic Adventure 2 has been pretty much neglected up until that point. So here I'll just be a fanboy with rose tinted glasses, giving in to the simple awe and wonder of seeing those old Dreamcast and PS2 backdrops recreated in HD glory.